Ladies and gentlemen, the Blue Collar Nerd. Everybody, it's Richard Koberger here, the Blue Collar Nerd. Let's jump into some release notes. So first on these notes, under onboarding, we're starting off strong with a y'all item. We've got the ability to update business units in bulk. To do this, you're gonna go to settings, operations, and business units. And then you'll notice in the right hand corner, we've got this bulk update button. So we can check off multiple business units, as many as we want over here. And then we can click bulk update, which opens up this page for us. So right here are the business units that we selected. We can add more or remove some if we need to. And then we're gonna click select fields to choose the fields that we want to update. And that gives us this flyout where we can check off whatever fields we're trying to edit. So let's say I'm trying to change the official name of these business units and the division. I'll click save and then I can put in whatever I want the official name to be for all of the business units that I have selected and choose the division here. I'll hit apply updates and you'll see that those updates have been made in bulk. New name, new name. Howdy y'all. Next under Titan Advisor, training mode has been added to Titan Advisor. So basically anytime you add a new office employee, they're going to be required to complete some interactive training before they can get fully into the live account. So the first time they log into the new account, they're gonna see a screen that looks like this and then they'll click let's get started to begin their training. The training material assigned to the user is automatic based on the role that was assigned to the account. So for example, if you assigned the dispatch role, then they're going to see a bunch of dispatch related training. And Titan Advisor admins can see and track everybody's progress through these trainings. And they are also able to bypass the training for a user if they need to do that. That's done in Titan Advisor in the existing team training view. This is super handy. This really streamlines the employee onboarding process because now there's no longer the need to go separately into the academy. All right, next under estimates, we have another y'all item. We have some enhancements to the estimate email settings. So by going into settings, invoicing and email and clicking on the estimates tab, you will now see two new options. First, you can now customize when online estimate links will expire. So previously an online estimate link that you sent out, it worked for 60 days and you couldn't change that. But maybe your policy is to honor pricing only for 30 days, or maybe you'll honor it longer than 60 days and you don't wanna to have to send out a new link. Well, now you can customize that to whatever you want. So if you click that drop down, you'll see some presets, but you can also click this add custom days button to put in whatever number you like. And if you have certain situations where you want to have this number set differently, that's fine because you also have the option to edit this per estimate when emailing out an estimate from the office. This was one of the top ideas in the community with 497 votes. Hi. But wait, we didn't stop there. You can also now choose to automatically resend the estimate in a certain number of days if it hasn't been either dismissed or accepted. So a couple of things to know about this feature. One is that it does pay attention to both the estimate and the opportunity status. So if the opportunity is marked as one or dismissed, that will also stop the estimate from being resent. If you're fuzzy on what I mean by that and you need some help with the difference between estimates and opportunities, I've got a separate video on that. I'll put a link to it in the description box down below. The other thing to note is that this is not tied into Marketing Pro in any way. So if you're using Marketing Pro and you've already got a campaign set up to remarket unsold estimates, then you wanna be careful about using this because you might be doubling up. Anyway, to everybody that asked for these features. Howdy y'all. All right, next under FinTech, GreenSky and GoodLeap Financing are now available through online estimates. So if you send out online estimates and you have a financing integration set up with either GreenSky or GoodLeap, then your customers are going to see this apply for financing button. And by clicking on that, they can apply for their own financing and the process looks very similar to what the technician would walk through out in the field. All right, next under accounting. <laughs> this is a big one. This, this is a big one. 
a lot of you are gonna really like this. Technicians might not like this so much, but everybody else, you're gonna really like this. This is a y'all item. You can now make the invoice summary a requirement to close out a job. So there are a few different places where you can configure this. One is to go into settings, operations, and job types, and then you can click edit on any job type and you should see this checkbox that says require an invoice summary to complete a job with this invoice type. So that's if you wanna handle it purely based on job type, but you can also set this up as a technician permission. To do that, you'd go to settings, people, and then technicians, click into a specific technician to edit, then click over into the permissions tab and under the invoicing section, you should see this permission that says invoice summary is required. So if you do it that way for specific technicians, then they're gonna be required to fill out that invoice summary regardless of the settings on the job type. However, if you leave that permission unchecked, but you do have a job type where that checkbox is checked off to make it required, then all technicians going out on a job of that type are still going to be required to fill out the invoice summary regardless of how that permission is set on their account. And you can also set this requirement per job if you want by going into the job edit pencil. So if an invoice summary is required and somebody on the office tries to complete the job, they'll get this invoice page to make any edits like they normally do. And when they try to click save, if there's no summary filled in, then they will get this error. On the mobile side, here's what it looks like. So on the invoice tab, first of all, you can see we have that red exclamation mark next to invoice summary indicating that it is required. When a technician goes to try and close out a job without having everything done that needs to be done, as usual, they'll see a warning that they still have some tasks to complete before they can complete the job. And if they tap into that, they'll see a list of what those tasks are. And one of those can now be complete the invoice summary. This was another top voted idea with 466 votes in the Service Titan community. Having an invoice summary is important. It looks bad to a customer to not have it filled out and it just makes for bad record keeping as well. And this has been a really long running request. I mean, people have been asking for this probably since Service Titan started. So really great to see this one included. Howdy y'all. All right, next under job booking and contact experience, and this one's not labeled as a y'all, but overruled. It's a y'all for sure. I've seen it asked for many times, including on the ideas board. So you can now tie custom fields to specific job types. And by extension, you can now make certain custom fields only required for specific job types. And to be clear, I'm talking about while booking a job. So in Service Titan, you have the ability to make a custom field appear on the call booking page. That is a gated feature, by the way, a backend configuration. So if you're not able to do that, but you would like to be, talk to support. But previously, okay, if you assigned a custom field to the job record, you would get this checkbox, assuming you had the feature gate, display on call booking screen. And then if you checked that off, you would get this secondary checkbox to mark that field as required. But if you did that, then that would mean that it was required always for every job that was booked. But sometimes you might have a custom field that isn't relevant for every single job type. It's only relevant for certain job types. So if you marked it required, then you would be marking it required even for situations where it isn't relevant, thereby forcing your CSRs to put in some fake information. And obviously that's no good. So now you can tie specific job types to custom fields. To do that, you're gonna go into settings, operations, and custom fields. And then you'll want to click edit on the custom field in question. So for this custom field here, we have it assigned to the job record, which gives us the option to display it on the call booking screen, which we have checked off. So then we have the option to make it required. So let's do that. And now if I scroll to the bottom of the page, that is where I can assign specific job types. So let's say I only want this piece of information when I am booking a clogged drain job. So then I'll click save and then let's book an example job here. So first I'm going to say that this is a fixture install. And you'll see I am not being asked to input the number of cats that this person has. However, if I change the job type to clogged drain, now I'm being asked to input the number of cats and that field is marked required. Howdy y'all. Okay, next under product release, I'm keeping the y'all hat on. We have some changes to the product release program itself. So a few things happening here. First of all, releases used to happen approximately every month. But you may have noticed over the course of the past couple of releases that the time in between them has been greater. So Service Titan is moving to quarterly releases, so four major releases per year. Now there might still be minor releases. Minor releases leave us room to incorporate bug fixes and critical things like that. But as far as like a bunch of new features dropping, like what's happening right now, that is going to happen quarterly. 
It's a request ServiceTitan's been getting for a long time to slow down their release schedule a little bit because new releases require training and learning and change management and doing that every single month can be a lot. So for most of our customers, they would prefer more time in between releases. Now I know for nerds like me, that's kind of a little bit of a bummer. I mean, I know when I was operating, I always wanted my grubby hands on the latest and greatest all the time, but the masses have spoken. Additionally, releases are now going to be marked on the community event calendar so that you can see when they're coming ahead of time. And to get there, you would go to the help widget, that question mark in the upper right, click on community, and then there on the right hand side, you should see the event calendar. And there you'll be able to see both when releases are made available in the next environment, as well as when they're going to be rolling out to the live environment. Do keep in mind though, releases are pushed out in batches, so not everybody gets it at the same time. And so you're not gonna see an exact day that the release is going to hit specifically your account. You're going to see a range where the release is going to start rolling out. There's also going to be a public facing product roadmap meaning there will be just a web page that you can visit anytime you want and see what Service Titan has coming down the pipeline as far as new features. Now, as of the time of me recording this video, that is not ready yet, but it is coming and we'll also be sharing the product roadmap in the upcoming town hall. Howdy, y'all. Okay, next, Dispatch Pro is having a limited availability launch. So Dispatch Pro is an upcoming Titan intelligence feature that can automatically assign technicians to jobs. And it does this based on settings that you input. So you can really fine tune and adjust how much you want it to prioritize getting the right technician on the right job, the technician who's gonna bring in the most revenue, versus how much you want it to focus on optimizing for driving efficiency. So just keeping the drive times low between jobs. It's a really cool feature. It's not fully out yet. This is just a limited availability release. If this is something that interests you, I'll put a link in the description down below where you can request a demo. Okay, next, Fleet Pro has launched. So Fleet Pro is a new offering from Service Titan that brings all of your fleet tracking directly into Service Titan. So it links up with hardware that is installed in your company vehicles, which features not only a GPS unit for location tracking, but also cameras. You can have a forward facing camera or a forward end driver facing camera, so you can see what the driver's doing. All of the details are a little bit too much to go into for this video, but I did make a totally separate video about Fleet Pro, and I'll put a link to that in the description box down below. All right, next under Marketing Pro, we have some custom field related updates. So in Marketing Pro, you're now able to utilize custom field data in two new places. The first is within the Audience Builder. So when you're building out an audience, you'll see this new section for custom fields. And there you can choose custom fields and select which answers to those custom fields you want to include or exclude from this audience. So for example, maybe you had a custom field that said, how did you hear about us? And maybe you want to send a specific marketing campaign out to only people that heard from you through a specific mailer that you sent out earlier in the year. And that adds even more flexibility to how you wanna build out these audiences because now you can make basically anything you want a parameter. Now the other new place that you can utilize custom fields is when designing an email itself. So when you're editing an email template, you can now insert a custom field as a merge tag. Merge tags are those little pieces of data that you put in and they pre-populate with specific pieces of information. So for example, I've got my custom field for number of cats and I can put now in my email, we hope that you and your insert number of cats, cats are doing great. Next under Marketing Pro ads, Facebook analytics have been added to Marketing Pro. So you can now connect your Facebook business manager accounts to Service Titan Marketing Pro for in-depth campaign performance metrics that you can view right here from Service Titan. And this is going to include metrics from any meta owned platform, including Facebook, but also Instagram and WhatsApp. Next, Titan Intelligence Neighborhood Opportunity Scoring has been added to Marketing Pro Analytics. So this is a propensity score. Basically this feature uses Titan intelligence data to give you an idea of how likely people who live in specific neighborhoods are to buy something. So you can look at different zip codes and see if they have a low, medium, or high probability of buying. Which of course is super helpful information because now you can allocate more of your marketing resources into those areas that have a high score. Okay, next under telecom, Second Chance Leads is now fully out and available for Phones Pro users. Now Second Chance Leads went into beta with the last release. So I've already explained what Second Chance Leads is in that video, so I'm gonna throw it to past me to explain it one more time. Past me? Second Chance Leads intelligently analyzes phone calls using machine learning, and if it believes that that phone call was a lead, it will save it here under the Second Chance Leads bucket for further review. And it will do that even if the CSR marked it as not a lead. And that gives managers an opportunity to potentially save some leads that otherwise would have just been forgotten. 
Now, yes, this is a Phones Pro exclusive. And before anybody gets their jimmies rustled about it, I just wanna say it's a Phone Pro exclusive because it has to be. You see, the way that this works, at least the way it works right now, is not by analyzing the phone call audio, it's by analyzing a transcript of the phone call. And transcriptions of phone calls is something that happens with Phones Pro. It's not something that happens with the standard phone integration. And for that reason, at least at this point in time, this can only work with Phones Pro. Thanks, past me. You handsome devil. Now something that is new with Second Chance Leads since the beta release, now when you are reviewing a call in Second Chance Leads, you'll see this Titan Intelligence generated transcription summary. So you can just read right there a summary of what happened during that phone call. Neat. Thanks, AI. You're welcome, Richard. All right, next under the improvement section of these notes, under accounting. You can now manually configure the inventory adjustment location for intact. So to prevent export discrepancies between service site and intact, you can now choose which location is attached to your inventory adjustments. The mapping inventory adjustment dropdown can be found under settings and intact, and it allows you to select either your adjustments warehouse or business unit. All right, next under customer and location records. So leads have been added to the call booking screen and the customer and location records. So to be clear, this is referring to the leads feature, which is a gated feature. With that configuration turned on, anytime a call is terminated that wasn't booked into a job, the call taker will have the opportunity to save that phone call as a lead for future follow-up. Now previously, all those leads that were saved were accessible only from the follow-ups page. But now leads will also be accessible from the call booking screen and any leads that were tied to a specific customer or location will be accessible from that corresponding customer or location page. And to be clear, this leads feature is something separate and different from the second chance leads feature that we talked about that's exclusive to Phones Pro. I don't believe I've made a video on the leads feature yet, but um, if you need more resources on it, I'll put a link to the knowledge base article in the description box down below. I should make that video though, I'll add that to my queue. Leads feature. Okay, next up we have another y'all item, not bad. We've added some enhancements to the recently redesigned customer and location pages. So first of all, you are now able to reorder and resize columns within tables. That way, if certain columns, certain pieces of information are more important to you, you can drag those forward so you don't have to scroll horizontally in order to see them. Also, tables are now collapsible, so you can just completely collapse them to get them out of your way if they're not relevant to you. And any tables that happen to be empty are automatically collapsed to save that space. And by the way, these configurations are also persistent, they're also sticky, meaning however any specific user sets things up, it's going to stay that way for that specific user. So if you change the way a certain column is filtered and then you drag a certain column over to make it closer to the left, all of that is going to stay that way for that user. Also, when the tags or contacts section is empty on the right hand side, the graphic that lets you know that it's empty is now smaller to save some space. And all of these changes have been made based on user feedback. Now I know that another big request was to be able to selectively hide or show certain columns to eliminate any horizontal scrolling at all. That is also coming down the pipeline, but is not available yet with this release. But with this release, at least you can reorder them to put the important ones first to still prevent any horizontal scrolling. Howdy, y'all. Okay, next, and I'm keeping the L hat on for this, you can now hide lifetime revenue and average job total on the customer records. So with the recent redesign, there were these two pieces of information added, lifetime revenue and average job total. Most people like having those pieces of information, but a few customers raised some concerns about letting just anybody see that. So if you don't want that information shown, there is now the ability to hide it. That is done from settings under operations and customer. And from there, you can choose to toggle those cards off. By the way, this is also where you're able to set up a dispatch fee threshold for your job average card. So on the customer page where it shows that job average, let's say you didn't want to include any jobs that were at or below your dispatch fee, you could input your dispatch fee into this threshold box and then that would take those out. Now keep in mind that this is not a per user permission. You're either turning these cards on or off and that's going to apply globally. Now this idea only had seven votes on the ideas board, but I know that I've also seen people raise the concern in Facebook masterminds and within the community itself. So to all those folks, howdy y'all. All right, next under forms, a document section has been added to the project screen. So previously you had to go into the audit trail to see media and forms, and any forms that were actually completed were buried in a list of all of your forms. Plus you were only able to email a single form at a time and pictures couldn't be emailed at all. You had to download them and then email them out in a separate email client. 
But now on the project page, we have this new section called documents. And from this section, you can see all of your completed forms, media, and attachments. So you can hover over any of these icons to see the title. And then if you go all the way over to the right and click view all, then you get this full table view. So from here, we have some tabs at the top to filter to just forms or just media or attachments. We've also got a search box here at the top left. And we also have some additional filters there in the top right where we can filter by created by, date created, and source. We also have the ability to upload files and add forms right here from this table view. And we can also click into anything to get a quick view of it. And in this table view, if we check off multiple things, then we can perform bulk actions, including sending content bundled as one email, deleting and downloading. Huge upgrade from the previous experience. Okay, next under job planning and management, we have a new alert type for project status. So you can now set up an alert that notifies you when the status of a project changes. And you can set up these alerts for any project status or substatus. Also, a job link has been added to the technician on assigned alert. So if you have a technician on assigned alert set up, now when you receive that alert, the alert will include a hyperlink to take you to the job record. All right, next under Marketing Pro, Canada has been added to reputation management locations. So with reputation management, whenever you're creating a new location, which is done under reputation, locations, and location details, you can now select USA or Canada. Next, you can now download your customer's external reviews. So from the review screen, you can now download a filtered list of all of your customer's external reviews as a CSV file. Next, under Pricebook, you can now add PDF assets to materials. So previously, if you wanted to attach a PDF asset, like a brochure or something, you were able to do that with services and and you were able to do that with equipment, but not with materials. But now that's no longer the case. Materials can have PDF assets uploaded to them as well. Next, under purchasing and inventory, you can now mark returns as sent. So you can now use the actions drop down on the return screen to mark returns as sent. This is helpful for situations where you manually process a return outside of Service Titan or you process the return through some sort of vendor portal. You can now just manually mark it as sent to accurately track the status in Service Titan. Next, we have an update to the receipts table. So the receipt amount column is now added to the receipt screen, which displays the total value of all receipt items, including tax and shipping as a dollar value rounded to two decimal places. This lets you view and track your expenses without needing to navigate through multiple receipts. Next, the vendor part number is now automatically populated on purchase orders. So when you generate a PO by clicking copy invoice items, the vendor part number associated with the selected vendor is now automatically populated for each item. And finally, under Titan Exchange, business unit, job type, and role templates have been added to Titan Exchange. So Titan Exchange, that's accessed through settings and Titan Exchange. It's still a beta feature, but it is available to everybody. It should be live in your account. And Titan Exchange allows you to pull in templates into your account. So for example, you could pull in some reports or some forms. And now you can also pull in business unit templates, job type templates, and role templates as well. Anyways, that's all I got for today. Be sure to hit like if you liked this video and found it valuable. Be sure to subscribe to Surface Titan's YouTube channel if you haven't done that already. Hit that bell icon so that YouTube notifies you anytime we upload a new video. And leave me a comment down below to let me know what your favorite updates are out of this release. Please remember that your engagement through likes, comments, and subscriber numbers are the ways in which my success is measured. And hey, if you like Service Titan, you could also do me a solid and leave us a good review somewhere. On Google is a good place. And if you really, really want to do me a solid, in the review you could mention certain things that you like the most about Service Titan, like certain content creators that, that give you valuable information all the time. I don't know. Appreciate it. Peace.